This video will demonstrate how to determine the cable loss using the instrument's tracking generator option and how to compensate for the cable loss while measuring transmitter power. To get the most out of this video, we recommend viewing these videos beforehand. We begin this video with the standard connection used to measure transmitter power. A coaxial test cable connects the radio's antenna port to the instrument's TR port. When the radio is keyed, the power is measured by the broadband power meter. The radio is transmitting a UHF band signal into the instrument through the TR connector. The broadband power meter indicates that the signal power is 4.54 watts. Although this test may work well as a quick check of the radio's transmitter power, the setup is ill-suited for a procedure that requires greater accuracy, such as power alignment of the transmitter. In order to obtain an accurate power measurement, the loss of the test cable must be factored into the test. The coaxial cable has a characteristic impedance which will attenuate a signal passing through it. This finite conductivity of the cable, along with imperfections in the cable, will cause losses that increase with the signal's frequency. This loss reduces the amplitude of the signal and will produce a power measurement lower than what the transmitter is actually generating. Therefore, in order to measure the true power of the transmitter, we must determine how much cable loss is present at the transmitter's frequency. This procedure will use the tracking generator option to determine the cable loss at a specific frequency. The procedure will also require a short reference cable, a barrel connector that will connect the test cable to the reference cable, and appropriate adapters for connecting the cables to the GEN and TR ports of the instrument. We begin by pressing the test key to access the spectrum analyzer. We'll sweep the cable from 100 MHz to 1 GHz. To do that, we'll set the frequency mode to start-stop. We'll set the start frequency to 100 MHz. Next, we'll set the stop frequency to 1 GHz. The RF input is set to TR. This is important because in order to get an accurate measurement of the cable loss, we need to use the superior VISWAR characteristics of the TR port. We'll select the GEN port as the RF output of the tracking generator. The tracking generator level is set to 0 dBm. One end of the reference cable is connected to the GEN connector. The other end of the reference cable is connected to the TR connector. If the trace is not visible on the display, set the scale for 10 dB per division and adjust the reference level until it can be observed. This trace represents the loss of the reference cable from 100 MHz to 1 GHz. This trace will be used as the reference in our measurement, so we need to set it as the reference trace. Pressing the trace soft key will present a menu of soft keys that allow manipulation of the trace data. Pressing the set reference soft key will store this trace data as reference data. Once the trace is stored as the reference, pressing the mode soft key will toggle the analyzer to the reference mode. When the analyzer is in the reference mode, the reference trace data points are all translated to 0 dBm. Now, for example, if any applied signal at a specific point in the frequency span were 10 dB lower than the same point in the stored reference trace, the signal level will be displayed at a minus 10 dBm level. This takes all of the work out of discerning how much loss the test cable has at any given frequency.
Now we'll disconnect the reference cable from the TR connector and connect a barrel adapter to its free end. One end of the test cable is connected to the barrel adapter. The other end of the test cable is connected to the TR connector. The tracking generator signal now passes from the gen connector through the reference and test cables back into the TR connector. The spectrum analyzer displays the absolute loss of the test cable from 100 MHz to 1 GHz. Our radio's transmitter frequency is 380.025 MHz, so we'll use a marker to find out how much loss the cable has at that frequency. We'll enable Marker 1, and we'll set Marker 1 to the transmitter frequency. The marker readout tells us that the signal level at 380.025 MHz is minus 0.7 dBm. This tells us there is a minus 0.7 dB loss at this frequency through the test cable. We can now use this information to accurately compensate for the test cable loss. The compensation value is programmed into the Configure Offsets tile, so we'll press the front panel Config key to go to the tile. The Offsets tile is usually the first configuration tile to appear, but if it doesn't appear, press the Config key a second time and select Offsets from the drop-down menu. The loss value is entered into the RF Analyzer Level Offset field. Note that because the value is negative, the instrument notes the value as an external loss. The Analyzer Offset soft key is pressed to toggle the offset compensation on. Pressing the Return key returns the display back to the Spectrum Analyzer. The analyzer now indicates that an offset value is active. We'll press the front panel test key to return back to the analog duplex display. We'll remove the reference cable and connect the radio to the TR port using the test cable. We'll enter the transmitter frequency of the radio into the RF frequency field of the analyzer's tile, then key the radio. With the cable loss compensation value active, the power meter now displays the actual power produced by the transmitter, which is 5.39 watts. If the compensation is turned off, we can see how much the cable loss actually affects the measurement. Without compensating for the cable loss, the measured power is only 4.58 watts. The measurement is over 800 milliwatts lower, a difference of 15%. Thus, the tracking generator can determine the loss of the transmission cable, and that loss can be compensated for, resulting in far more accurate transmitter power measurements.